Welcome to this look at the new cow system, specifically dairy cows, on Seasons 19, on console, with me, Mr Sealy P. Right, ladies and gentlemen, in this video we are going to be looking at the two breeds of cow which are our dairy animals. They will give us young and they will give us milk. The previous video I did was on um, the new cow system beef. This is the new cow system dairy or milk, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, we have two breeds of animal in the new with the new seasons mod. Uh, if we click on here, we'll go down. First one down there, female Ayrshire. Um, these you buy new at 1.9 years old, 904 pounds in weight. Um, now the game or seasons allows the fact that these animals come to you already artificially inseminated and it will run through a, a gestation cycle as you know, the longer you have them. Uh, as part of Realismus's website, it does say that cows will live for 10 years. So you've got quite a few cycles out of them. Now it does say they will only produce milk after they've had their first young their first birth so that's one of the thing we're going to be testing on here um now the airshire it does say um airshire farmers can rest assured that low feed consumption and price per head are two well worthy trade-offs for lower milk production so if we go down another couple we've then got the holsteins or holsteins um these are the same 1.9 years old these are 1080 pounds in weight when you buy them a little bit more expensive and it does say this is the queen of milk production this breed requires a lot of feed and is expensive to buy up front but produces the most milk so we're going to be comparing the two breeds the ayrshire and the holsteins but what we are going to be doing or what i'm going to be doing is a test with another comparison this um, animal enclosure, this cow pasture, these are the small ones, standard in-game ones, nothing unusual or different about them. Um, I'm going to have, this is my control with Ayrshire's. The next one I'm going to have Holsteins in, but then the other two, I'm going to put Ayrshire's in both of those and they are going to be compared to this one. This will be my control and I will run it normally, if there is such a word, the way that I would run it. The other two further down, I'm going to run one with everything and one with pretty much nothing and compare it to a kind of standard-ish setup to see what the comparisons are if there are any um, and then we'll also be comparing the Ayrshire's and the Holsteins together um, for births, how many births and um, milk production etc etc. Now if you haven't watched my one on beef there are a couple of things to be aware of uh, one if you give the animals straw you will get manure if you don't give them straw you will get slurry you can't do both with seasons on you'll get one or the other but what i did found, find with the beef was that if you didn't give them straw their health suffered um so that's something we're going to be having a quick look at in this as well first thing i'm going to do before i even get any animals is water troughs again if you haven't watched any of my other seasons 19 videos on animals and animal care there are animal troughs or animal troughs animal um water pumps is what i'm trying to say uh, you will find these under placeables under animal pens right the way at the far end these only come with seasons these aren't a separate mod at the moment and if you place a water pump that will always make sure that you have water in that trough no matter what happens uh, if i pull it out a little bit so that will put a certain amount in depending on how many animals you have in there how big they are how much feed they require will depend how much it puts in that will not fill the trough but it will make sure you never ever run out of water so what i'm going to do now is put the other ones on the other three um, and then we'll crack on getting some animals in and we'll get some testing done so as i said this first one is going to be ayrshire's um, i'm not going to be making total mix ration that's not part of what it is if, you, if you're new to the game you don't know what total mix ration is it's um, a feed mix you make up using you can just use silage and hay uh, you can use silage hay and straw in a combination of feed mixer and that will make up a mix of total mix ration that's the kind of best case scenario for feed and also something we're going to be looking at but if you get a buy anything silo the silos from edge and castiga there's a few different ones out there you can actually buy it direct and on certain maps there are points where you can buy total mixed ration but it depends on the map and the map maker um, so if you don't want to make it yourself you can actually buy it which makes life a little bit easier so this first one i'm going to go with 20 of each so that's our 20 airshers in the first one just there a bit holsteins 
in the second one. There we go. And the last two I'm going to do airshares in both, but like I say, one will have everything. So I'll give them total mix ration, grass and hay and straw. The other one, I will only give them grass. No straw, no hay, no total mix ration and see the difference between them. And I'm wondering whether or not right from the outset, if we give them everything, whether those will produce faster uh, than just doing a kind of standard setup with one feed type or another. So that's what I'm going to do now. I will see you in a moment when these two have got their airshers in. And we'll see how we get them. Okay, so the season's on. The standard... I didn't mention this on the, on the beef video, and I probably should have done. If I go into the normal menu, the animal menu that is normally on the top here um, on the base game isn't here anymore with seasons on. If I press L1 and uh, my options button on my PlayStation controller, it opens up this menu here. So I can go across to my animals menu and it will give me my cattle pastures. Now what it should have, if I've got this right, <laughs> the first one will have my airshers, which I'm going to do a standard setup. The second one is going to have um, my Holsteins in and then the third and fourth are going to have the other two where I'm going to do one as everything, one as nothing. Um, and as we can see already, they're in there. The water pumps, oh that's interesting. The water pumps are saying zero, but it does say water pumps, so at some point that's going to refresh and there's going to be water in there, I hope. Um, so, this one is going to have total mixed ration and straw, as are the Holsteins, because I'm going to compare these two, so they're going to have total mixed ration and straw. Like I say, one of those is going to have total mixed ration, straw grass and hay the other one is only going to have grass so we should get a real kind of mixture of what's going to happen here um, the one that doesn't have straw is going to produce slurry the ones that do have straw are going to produce manure so it'd be interesting to see whether or not that kind of stays balanced going with 20 animals of each is more manageable for testing and obviously you've got to scale this up thinking about if you go for 100 200 500 you know depends on how many pens you place and how many animals this will then scale up um, along those lines. So I'm going to give them feed uh, and what I will do is skip ahead and I will see you in early summer and we'll see if we've got any change from our initial weights of £904, £1,080 and whether we've got any changes there with regard to fertile, not fertile, those kind of things for the animals. I'll explain a little bit more about that when we get there. Okay then, a couple of things worth pointing out before I skip forward. The animals are now all fed. Uh, if we look at the pens, our first pasture that's got our um, airshers in, when I say I've fed them standard, I'm just going to give them total mixed ration. So the thing to point out straight off the bat is the um, estimated food required for the year is 96,000 litres. The trough will only take a percentage of that. It won't take 96,000 litres all in one go. So it's taken 14,887 litres. That will depend on the size, like the weight of the animals, how many animals you've got in there. It will be a percentage of how many animals you've got in there, how much food is required for the entire year, and it will put a certain amount in. That will last you about two days, roughly. That amount will fluctuate depending on how many day, game days you're running. I'm running a three-day season, um, so each day will represent a month. That's what I'm going with. Um, if we look at the next one up, our next enclosure over, the Holsteins, Already, they've taken more food, and it did say that they required more food. They're more expensive to buy, they cry more food, but they give you more milk. So rather than the 14,887, they've taken 17,791. So already we can see they've required more. Now I've put straw in that one and that one. The third pasture is the pasture where I've gone for everything. They've got grass, they've got hay and silage, or hay. They've got total mix ration and straw. The water pumps have all kicked in. That's great. The last one has only got grass. There's no hay or silage, there's no total beast ration, there's no straw. They have got water, they have to have water, otherwise the animals will die. So this is going to be our comparisons. Now already, that third, that final pasture, without any straw, is producing slurry, 111 litres of it. The other pastures are producing manure at various different rates as well. Interestingly, the airshares are at 93 litres for each airshare pasture. The Holsteins are 111 litres, so potentially we're going to get a higher um, manure output 
from the Holsteins, but that's something we're going to pay attention to as we go along. So I'm going to jump ahead. I will see you, as I said already, but I thought I'd sort of do this a little bit, uh, in early summer. We'll see where we are uh, with regard to animals that are ready to produce, saying fertile, not fertile. Like I said, I'm going into a bit more detail on that when we get there. Okay, we are on early summer. We have gone through one game day, which is the equivalent to one month. Uh, and this is where we stand with regard to the animals at the moment. So I've opened up my menu, L1 and the options button. Our first cattle pasture, which has got our airshes in, or the first lot of airshes, our control group. Um, they've had about half of their feed. They've used about half of their straw. The water pump will continue to chug away. They will not run out of water. Um, manure production is at 9,820 litres. Their health has gone up to 86%. They all started at 80%. Each of these pens were at 80%. They've gone up to 86%. Now, what it does also say, if I scroll across, or go across, and go down this list, rather than saying not fertile, they now say next animal in. That one says next animal in 0 0.7 years. Well, that's going to be seven months I think that's going to work out at each game day that I'm playing is a month so that says 0 0.7 years if I scroll down I've got the next animal in if it's blank there's no time frame for that yet I've got a couple that says 0 0.7 what will happen as I move through the game days that will go down to 0 0.6 some of the others will come up at 0 0.7 not all of your animals, not all of your cows will gestate at the same time. Because if they did, you'd have peaks and troughs, pardon the pun, um, where you're going to have all of the animals producing milk and no births, or births and no milk, or, you know, so it kind of staggers it. So some animals will be giving birth, some will be producing milk. When ones stop producing milk because they're going into a new gestation cycle, others will be. So you shouldn't get those lulls. You may get a few little dips here and there. And that's the same with each one. If we go up to our Holsteins, um, the Holsteins have produced a little bit more manure. So they are producing more manure. Um, their health is also at 86%. And it says exactly the same if we scroll up and down there. We've got some that say 0 0.7 years for next animal and some are just sitting at blank. Um, and that will vary. It's never going to be the same twice. You could have four pens, all with 20 in, all with the same type. And you're not going to have exactly the same amount of animals all... Um, ready to produce young at the same time. Now here's the interesting one. If we go across and up to the first of our test pastures, the Ayrshire's that have everything, they haven't produced any more than the Ayrshire's as my control group. Same amount of manure, health is exactly the same, weight is exactly the same. Now they have put on weight. Our first Ayrshire's, we bought them at, they were at £904 in weight. They're now 917 pounds. The Holsteins, we bought at 1,080. They're now 1,100. So they are putting on a little bit of weight. So these ones that have got everything haven't done anything different to my control group. And if you notice, the hay and silage and the grass hasn't moved. So if there's, if there's total mix ration in that trough, they will take the total mix ration above everything else. So filling all three up is making no difference at all. I might as well not bother with the hay and the, and the grass because it really is if I, having no impact whatsoever. It's the total mix ration that's creating that situation. Now if I go up to the next one which has got nothing, this is where things change quite dramatically. They've used half their grass but the health is at 58%. So rather than going up to 86, it's dropped to 58%. Rather than putting on weight to 917 pounds, they've only got gone up to 913 pounds. So their health being lower has affected the amount of weight they're putting in. Now, it does say though, as we scroll down, we've got some, but they're saying 0 0.8 years, not 0 0.7, which is interesting. Now that has to be related to their health. So the ones that have got nothing are further off from having young than the ones that have got everything and my control group. So that's something to bear in mind. If you are thinking, I'll oh, just give them grass, they'll be fine. They can just eat the grass out the pen, that'll be fine. It will have an adverse effect on their health and it will have an adverse effect on how quickly they produce young and therefore how quickly you're going to get milk. So you need to bear that in mind. That's quite important. Um, I'm going to feed them all again. 
and then we're going to roll over into the next day and see where we stand. What I might do is roll over a few days until we get to a point where we've got a few animals that are in that gestation process so we can see a few and, and how they're looking. Um, but yeah, so that's where we stand at the moment. I shall see you soon. Well, here I am, back again. Some time has passed, it is midwinter. We have gone through eight months. The bases are loaded. It's time for the big one. So, we are one night away, I think, from our first burst. We'll have a look over here. Um, so our Ayrshires in our first pasture have continued to put on weight. They're at 1,001 pounds in weight now. 98% um, health, which is where they've got to absolutely fantastic if we go across with my right uh, my left stick actually i didn't say that earlier did I? but left stick i can go from side to side i can go up and down my pastures like that if i move my left stick over to this side i can then go up and down my animals which is fine so if we go right to the top you'll see 0 0.3 years 0 0.2 years 0 0.4 5 0 0.4 3 2 i'm sure i've got some that say 0 0.1 i better have because there were before 0 0.3731 there we go four there's a there's one in there that's due to give birth but going right the way from 0 0.1 2 3 4 then we've got a five I don't know if we had a six but seven so then what will happen is from this point on every day that passes i'm going to get new births and that's the same for each of them if we go up our Holsteins are up to £1,221 in weight, but they started off heavier in the first place, also at 98% health, um, and they're exactly the same. I've got them ranging from 0 0.1 up to 0 0.7. I don't think I've got any 0 0.8s in there. And some still have skipped. I've got some that aren't showing anything, so they're not fertile at all yet. That one there, not at all. But that will come into season at some point soon. So as I said right at the start, you're not going to have all of your animals all giving birth at the same time it's going to be a rotation round they're going to come in and out of gestation periods um, as and when i'm going to check on my notes from realismus in a minute um, about the gestation period not that it actually makes a huge amount of difference once your animals start producing um, if we go up to our no this one here that's got everything like i said before it really is kind of irrelevant that they've got everything because the hay and, and uh, grass haven't moved i'm topping them up but it's not making any difference whatsoever um the total total mix ration is what they're eating at the moment so what i might do with this one is um i might let the total mix ration run out and see what impact it has them just having the hay and grass um the one that is more interesting at the moment is this top one um because if you remember we gave them nothing they they've only had grass they've had no straw no to total mix ration um, their weight is considerably lower. Um, I say considerably lower. It's not massively. The, the Ayrshire's in that pasture and that one are at 1,001. And they're at 965. So not hugely underweight compared to the other ones. Their health, though, is only at 57%. The others are on 98. That said, if I go across, I've still got animals ready to give birth going from 0. I think, yeah, go 0. 0.1 right the way up so that initial blip i had where it said 0 0.8 and all the others said 0 0.7 that seems to have ironed itself out so they're in exactly the same position a little bit lighter not as heavy as the other ones so all the way up to this point at nine months um it hasn't really had too much of an impact i think where it's going to have more of an impact is when they all start producing milk because their health is so low i don't think they're going to produce as much milk as the others so that's something we're going to have to look at you know from our control and you know so that's where we stand at the moment we are a day off giving birth um slurry and manure production is continuing doing really well so um what we're going to do skip ahead and i'm going to see you hopefully we'll have some new births and hopefully some milk production but i think at this point i'm going to mention the fact that and i'm sure i have done on previous ones where i've talked about animals seasons is not for the impatient seasons whilst they're trying to make it as realistic as they can i know people are still complaining it's not realistic realistic farming is called farming i mean at the end of the day this is still a game 
It's, yes, it says the word simulator, but they're trying to make it more realistic. And they're trying to give you these gestation periods and periods where the animals are, are have young and that kind of thing. If you don't want to be waiting nine months for your first burst, if you don't want to be waiting nine months to get your milk, you can either skip through or seasons probably isn't going to be for you or if you don't want to do that at all then just stick to arable but even then you've still got a season you've got to deal with a year you've got to deal with um so just you know it's worth mentioning at this point uh see you in a bit right then i've had to skip another month i got into month nine and didn't get any births nothing happened so i skipped through to month 10 so we're 10 days in month 10 we're in early spring and we have some new births. Uh, so the first thing we'll do, actually I'm gonna read off the uh, the information I've got here from the website. Um, it says that gestation period is nine months. So nine months, and then they gave birth on the 10th month for me personally. You can start to milk them for 10 months after the birth of a calf. So once they've given birth, they will produce milk for 10 months. Um, it then says they will be rested for two months during their dry period. So you'll get 10 months of milk out of them, then two months they won't produce milk but after three months so after they've given birth now three months after they've given birth they are artificially inseminated again so they will run through the cycle again and they will give birth again nine months after that so the cycle will continue and as i said earlier because they're all staggered not all at the same time you're always going to have milk production you're always going to have new calves being born um but they're going to be staggered so and it's never going to be the same for everybody that's the thing about it um so if we look here now my Ayrshire's, um, which my kind of, um, my control group, um, they've had two births. So we've got two new Ayrshire's, which is wonderful. And they've already started producing milk now. So those two that have given birth are now producing milk. There are 176 litres. So I'm going to compare the Ayrshire's with the Holsteins, first of all. The Holsteins have had five new births. And they produced 481 litres of milk. So already they're producing more milk. But they're producing more milk, as well as the fact that they're the queen of milk. Um, they've got more in there. They've had five births as opposed to two. So we're already seeing a difference between the two. Now, my pasture where they had everything, and I said I was going to let the total mix ration run out, which I have done now, they've had three births. So they've had a birth, one birth more than my control group. And so far they've produced more milk at the moment but their health has dropped a little bit my control group airshares are at 97 percent those airshares are at 96 percent but weirdly the holsteins have dropped to 95 they were all climbing pretty much the same apart from that final group um they were all at 99 percent since they've started giving birth since we've tripped over into the 10th month the health has got all over the place so we'll keep an eye on that but if we go up to the top one, they've had one birth, which is only one more than my control group. But here's the thing. Their health is still sitting at 58% because they haven't got straw. They haven't had total mix ration. They haven't had hay. They're just having grass. Look at the milk production. 70 litres. So it's lower anyway. Yes, they've only had one birth. It's going to be lower because there's only, there's only one cow that's now producing milk. So we're going to keep an eye on that because I think the milk production is going to be a bit lower because their health isn't so great. The thing about this is going to be weighing up your options. If there's not much difference in it, then you might as well just give them grass. It's cheaper than total mixed ration. It's easier to produce and collect. And if you've got a silo that contains forage, put it all in there and just give them grass. If the difference is significant, really significant, then yeah, total mixed ration is the route to go down. So that's what we're going to be looking at is the health and milk production so much lower if it's not you know that that's kind of what we're looking at we're trying to find out so we've got some new births things are looking good uh interestingly if we go across to our airshares and our new births we've got the two for our first pasture are both females if we go to our holsteins we go across we've got five and they're all female weighing 89 pounds if we go to the next pasture of airshares we've got a male in there so we've got two female airshares new births and we've got one male now the thing about that male is whilst technically there that is now that's a meat animal because that's not going to produce young it's not going to produce milk 
um, that's not going to suddenly become a Salah. It's not going to suddenly become a limousine. It's not going to suddenly become a, you know, uh, a Brahman. Um, that is a male Ayrshire. So whilst you can keep it, you can fatten it up until it's much older and then sell it, that's going to take quite a while. It's not going to be as quick to do and as efficient as a proper meat breed um, cow. So that's something to weigh up. Do you keep the males or do you just get shot of them sort of straight away? Get get rid of them. You know, that's up to you. But you will get male births in there. And like I say, they're not going to suddenly become a really productive meat breed. That is just a male Ayrshire. That's all it is. Um, so we are going to get some males and females mixed in. Uh, so what I'm going to do now skip ahead we'll see if the milk production has changed dramatically we'll see how many more births we get we'll see who's the more productive and we'll keep plugging away okay it's mid-spring we are into month 11 we've got more movements around everything now i think the thing to think about here is as i've mentioned a couple of times already is the unpredictability and that's the beauty of seasons now nothing's set in stone nothing is guaranteed nothing is you know it's trying to give you that feeling of you could do everything right things can still go wrong um how would you kind of react to those things now i could have done four pastures all with 20 airships all fed exactly the same thing and i would still be getting a different amount of births from each of them because which animals are productive at what point is random that's the thing about it um so it's kind of hard especially if you've changed parameters as well to compare but we can compare the airships and the whole scenes that's not a problem because that's one of the main things we were looking at um so if we go down to our first airship now this is my control group and bizarrely enough they're acting the most weird out of all of them i've only had another two births so we're at 124 births um milk production there are 1547 liters of milk being produced at the moment my holsteins are up to 5614 liters now they have got three more animals in there that could be the breed it could be just the luck of the draw because our next airship pasture has also got 27 now this was my control this was the pasture that had everything and i decided let's get rid of the total mixed ration and see what happens their health has dropped down to 90% as a result, whereas my first one, my control group, they were still at 96. I mean, that's dropped a little bit, but they're at 96. They've dropped all the way down to 90%. Now, what will happen is, like I said earlier, there's no point putting everything in. They will take total mix ration as a priority. So if you've got all three feed types in there, they will use the total mix ration. Having taken that away, they are using the hay slash silage. They're not touching the grass because hay silage is the next best thing in that trough. If you take the hay and silage away, they'll eat the grass. Um, so if you're going to go with hay and silage, there's no point putting grass in. They're not going to touch it. If you're going with total mixed ration, there's no point putting hay, silage or grass in. They're not going to touch it. Now, it will always, I say will always, it's still taking from the pastures. Every so often when it rolls over, it will take a certain amount out of the pasture and put it into the grass trough. As you can see down these ones, I haven't given these two pastures any grass whatsoever, but there is grass in their troughs because it's taking it from the pasture. Now, the even more peculiar one is this top one here. Now, this is the one that had nothing. Their health is still sitting at 58%, which is quite poor. 26 bursts. So I've got two more bursts than my control group still. Milk production is at 1481. My control is at 1547. Now, bearing in mind there's a massive difference. I've got health of 96% and health of 58%. They're producing almost as well as my control group Ayrshire's on 96% health. Whether or not that is going to that divide will get wider uh, the longer you have them, I'm not too sure. Um, but we can see quite clearly the Holsteins are the way to go. I mean, if you want milk production, like I said, it'd be different if there's not a lot of difference between them. They're double their com next competitor. The Ayrshire's with 27, they've got 27. One th uh, 2,355 litres versus 5,614, over double the milk production for the same amount of animals. Um, I mean, that to me kind of tells you what you need to know. Go with the Holsteins, they're more expensive to buy in the first place. I haven't felt that they're taking 
so much more feed per year that it's not worth having them. Not at all. It's negligible. Um, as far as value goes, these animals haven't dropped much in value. If we click onto this one here, the Holsteins are now worth 1887 and I bought them for 1954 so they haven't depreciated a lot. These are not meat animals. They're not supposed to be making you a load of money on the actual animal itself. These are supposed to be producing milk. That's where you make your money on these animals. Um, the new births down the bottom here at the moment are only worth 547. Now bear in mind these the females are not going to be productive until they've gone past well over two years because we bought them at 1.9 didn't we? The Holsteins where you buy them new at 1.9 years old so these guys have got to go quite a long way before they become productive um, unless you just want to keep offloading all your new stock and keep your, your originals going with your milk production. That I mean again that's your choice. Um, the Ayrshire's again haven't depreciated much but again they're not a meat animal these are supposed to be for the milk 1220 and we bought them for 1287 um, their young are worth a bit less actually 324 again if you are going to be offloading your young and just keeping your original stock again Holsteins are worth more money 500 and something versus 300 and something you know again that's a good indication the Holsteins are kind of the way to go with this I am going to click over one more simply because I want to see if that gap gets any wider and I'm really curious about that in pasture those animals that had nothing to see if there's a huge difference between them and my control we'll see how many more bursts we get because it could well be that if you are going to go down the airship route you haven't got to go mad and feed them everything you haven't even got to give them straw if they're going to still produce almost as much as your control so that's what I'm going to do see you in a moment that will be the final step I think okay conclusions time we are 12 months in we are back round to late spring again um there is a certain randomness to this that you, you kind of struggle to get your head around sometimes but without any shadow of a doubt the Holstein's the way to go for milk production as far as the other tests go I mean between the Ayrshire's and the Holstein's Holstein's are the way to go absolutely if you want milk as far as reproduction goes there's nothing in it between any of these between my control group between the Holsteins between the ones that are now using hay as their primary food source and between the ones that um, didn't have straw and only had grass they've all produced pretty much the same we've got 31 animals 30 30 29 there's nothing in it so as far as reproduction goes there's no one breed Holstein or Ayrshire that seems to be head and shoulders above the other the milk production however is that whole different ball game my control group Ayrshire's um, are at 13 uh, where are we no, that's grass they're at 5,935 litres the Holsteins 14,755 litres so the Holsteins is the way to go for milk my Ayrshire's and this is where it gets a bit weird <laughs> my Ayrshire's that are now only having hay as their primary food source the total mix ration ran out they've got one less animal than the control group but look at the milk 6,002 to 7,775 I'm getting more milk from my animals that are only having hay health wise my Ayrshire's that are having total mixed ration are at 94%. The ones that are only having hay are at 86%. So the health is dropping even lower. But I'm getting more milk production, which is weird. My animals that had nothing, no straw, no total mixed ration, no hay, just grass, are at 4,548. So compared to my control group, they are dropping off a little bit now. Not massively. One less animal... I would say if you're going to feed your animals, it needs to be hay or total mixed ration. I'll say it doesn't need to be. If, if you don't mind a slightly less milk production, you just don't want the hassle of having to make total mixed ration or making hay, you think, and you know what, I'm just going to put grass in there and be done with it. You can get away with it. You can get away with not having straw. Births are only, you know, a couple off the best. And milk production isn't that far off the others of their breed. But, by far head and shoulders above everyone else for milk production 
is Charlstein's. Um, take from that what you will. There is still a randomness to all of this. Um, I can't understand how come those cattle that are only having hay are out producing the cattle that are having total mixed ration. Unless that's some kind of an anomaly, whether over a much longer period, if I carried on and went into another year, then another year, then another year, whether that would balance itself out, whether one would overtake the other. Again, that's something that a much, 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 much longer test period would take to solve. Um, but I think as far as it goes with, with the animals, the water pumps, again, I've had no problems. Water pumps have been, haven't had to touch the water once. Uh, Holstein's definitely the way to go if you want milk production. Um, no one is more prolific than the other with regard to births. It all just seems a little bit random, but they're all about the same. Um, and you are not going to get any milk or any young until month 10. It's going to go nine months, then month 10, you will start to get young, you will start to get milk. If you're expecting milk straight away, it's not going to happen. It really isn't going to happen. Uh, so as far as all the other tests go, it's kind of inconclusive. It really hasn't seemed to have made a difference what you feed them, weirdly. I thought, I really thought it would. Um, so there you go. Um, I hope you found it useful and informative in some way, shape or form. If you have, give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do, as always, thanks for watching.